Good morning, Facebook. Welcome to bringing the zoo to you here at Brookfield Zoo. My name is Craig. I'm an animal care specialist at Hamill Play Zoo, Hamill Wild Encounters, and our ambassador program. And today I want to talk to you guys about a really cool adaptation that's crucial for pretty much any animal, camouflage. So with me today to help demonstrate camouflage with uh, animal care specialist Katie, we have our ball pythons, Marceline, and our very famous one, Casper, the leucistic ball python. <clears throat> and then to my left, we have Keeper Jill with Medusa, the Dumeril's ground boa. So camouflage, like I said, is a very cool adaptation. It's very, very important. Many animals use this, utilize this to survive, and they need it for hiding from predators primarily, but a lot of animals like these snakes will use it to hide from their prey, and it will help them hunt. And camouflage is so cool that we have even, as humans, had to study animal camouflage probably as early as the 1890s so that we can learn these techniques and use them for human applications like the military and stuff like that. So I'm going to go over a couple types of camouflage with you that you might have seen in some of our zoo animals and uh, something that you'll see with these guys. So one of the most basic ones is concealing camouflage and that's pretty much just a polar bear. An animal blends in with a background that's the same color as that. So a polar bear, um, well, Casper would if she lived in the Arctic. Um, another one that you're gonna see, that you see right now actually, would be called, sorry, I'm blanking out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm blanking out. Um, well, I'll skip that one because I don't know why I'm blanking, but we also have disguise, <laughs> which would be an animal looking like another animal in the environment or another item in the environment, which would be something like a walking stick insect. It looks like a stick. And then we also have animals that do mimicry, which would be looking like potentially another animal that's either dangerous or venomous in some way or even bad tasting. And that could be like certain snakes that look very similar to another snake that actually is venomous. They have a similar color pattern. Um, you'll also see active camouflage which uh, is when an animal can actually change color. And that can be slow, like um, a seasonal or uh, for a life stage color change, like in a reindeer. A baby reindeer will be black when they're born. They start to turn brown and then they turn white in the winter time and then they'll go back to brown as the snow melts. And then of course you'll see um, some rapid color change like in an octopus. And then finally some animals will even do stuff like using items in the environment. They call that self-decorating. And um, a good example of that would be like a sloth that you'd see right here at the zoo. In the wild, they would um, they move so slow that they actually grow moss in their fur and that helps them blend in. And then of course with these guys, you see that they have patterns. Um, so a lot of animals will have a pattern such as stripes or as spots. Um, that'll help them uh, basically not stick out in a background of a certain color. Um, some animals actually use multiple methods of camouflage. Uh, if you've come to the zoo and seen our servals, you'll see uh, they use spots as their primary coloration, but they'll also use mimicry. So if you were to see them from behind, their, eye, their ears have false eye spots. It actually looks like eyes and um, of another animal looking back at them. So something behind them might think that there's a big predator staring at them and they'd want to stay away. So as you're looking at these animals, feel free to, to comment in and let us know what some of your favorite animals are and how they use their camouflage. But now as we're looking around at all these snakes, you can see that they're pretty different. Um, and while we see Marceline sitting on a tree, you can see her pretty good. So this wouldn't be a normal environment for her to blend into, but you can see she still does a pretty good job compared to an animal like Casper. Casper, of course, being the same species as Marceline, looks completely different. She doesn't have any pigment. She doesn't have any pattern. So she wouldn't really blend in where they come from in Africa. So which is why she wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. And like I said, they, need, they do need this camouflage, not only to hide from predators, but also to help them hunt. So that's why we have Casper here, but now she can teach you why it's so important to have camouflage. And of course, Medusa, the Dumeril's boa on the left, 
looks quite a bit different and also has a different pattern than the other two snakes because she comes from Madagascar where she would actually bl blend in better there than where these guys come from. So if you guys want and have any questions, you can feel free to ask now. We do. We have um, what kind of snakes they are. Can you just repeat? That? Yes. So the question is what kind of snakes are these? So with Jill over here being held is a young Dumeril's boa. Her name is Medusa and these guys are also called the Madagascar ground boa because they come from Madagascar. So she would typically blend in with um, the leaf litter on the ground. Um, the big tree next to Katie is our ball python Casper. And if you guys follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you've probably seen Casper quite a bit. She's very popular. She's a very beautiful animal. And then on the right, or on my right, I guess, on the other side of Katie is Marceline, who is also a ball python, but she looks more like a normal ball python. These are the types that you would find in the wild. And we got Casper and Marceline together. And then how old are they, and which is the longest? So the question is, how old are they, and which one's the longest? So Casper and Marceline, we're not positive how old they are. They did come out of a confiscation, but based on the size that we got them and how long that we've had them, we'd guess that they're probably around eight years old. And then Medusa here was born here at the zoo, I believe about seven years ago. And so she would be around seven years old and we just measured her, she's actually about five feet. And she's still growing and these guys can get, uh, especially for a female, uh, probably around seven feet long and they'll get quite a bit thicker. What do they eat? What do they, the question is, what do they eat? That's a great question. So um, primarily the snakes will eat um, rodents, especially here at the zoo. We feed everything frozen and thawed. Uh, Medusa gets medium-sized rats. Marceline and Casper get small-sized rats, but snakes are opportunistic. So in the wild, they would kind of try and eat anything that they think they can handle. And a good rule of thumb would be uh, something as big as the thickest part of their body. That's uh, the size of what they can eat. And we feed them every two weeks. <laughs> How fast can they move? How fast can they move? That's a good question. So striking, they can move pretty fast. They have to be able to strike out and grab their prey. But um, constrictors like these thick, thick bodied ones tend to move slower when they're just moving about. So they're not very fast animals unless they're actually going after their prey. What are the holes next to their eyes? The question is, what are the holes next to their eyes? So for, you can see it really well with Casper, and pretty well on Marceline too, um, those are their heat pits, so they actually sense body heat with those. And you'll notice if you were to get close to Medusa, you'd only really see her nostrils, you don't really see heat pits on her face. <clears throat> and they use, their nostrils for breathing, not for smelling. They'll typically, st they're sticking their tongue out right now to smell and, and sense around their environment. Is Casper albino? The question is, is Casper albino? That's a very good question. So Casper is actually called leucistic. An albino snake, the one thing you notice right away is that they would have red eyes and Casper doesn't have red eyes. But also an albino snake will still have a pattern all across its body, it would kind of be like whites and reds and yellows. So Casper is unique because she doesn't have any pattern whatsoever. She's just all white. Why do they stick their tongues out? The question is, why do they stick their tongues out? So that's how snakes are smelling. So they stick their tongue out to kind of taste the air or smell the air. And they'll bring their tongue back into their mouth where they have an organ called the Jacobson's organ that senses what they're smelling. And now you'll see that they do have nostrils, but they use that for breathing and not for smelling. It's like Marceline's trying to escape. <laughs> what do they feel like? The question is, what do they feel like? That's a fun question. So when I give my chats uh, for people that are kind of nervous about petting the snakes, um, a good thing I like to tell them is that they feel like a basketball. <laughs> Not that basketballs are made out of snakes, but they do. And then a lot of guests will um, be like, oh, okay, and they'll touch it and tend to agree with me. So. <laughs> And they're dry, they're not slimy, as what a lot of people think. And they can look that way, with the way the sun hits them, they're nice and shiny, but they're very dry. Why 
are their heads so small? <laughs> <laughs> Why are their heads so small? That's a great question. Well, snakes are very good at getting around and moving around. So even though they do have a small, small head, they can open it really, really wide when they um, eat. So that's, <laughs> that's a great question. So um, it does help them with movement. Um, it keeps their, uh, their head is a very important part of their body because the rest of their body is kind of like a big tube of muscle and rib cage. So a smaller head is a smaller target. Um, you can see with uh, Medusa's camouflage here too that she has a nice stripe that goes across that eye that helps actually hide her face and her eyes from um, a predator or a prey that might, you know, focus in on that kind of stuff. So. How often do they shed? How long does it take? The question is how often do they shed and how long does it take? Well, that's a good question and it depends kind of on the species and the age and size of the snake. So with Marceline and Casper, well, and Medusa, in fact, they're all still growing, so they shed a little bit more frequently. Um, Marceline and Medusa tend to shed every two months and it takes them about a week. And then, sorry, there's Marceline and Casper. Medusa takes a little bit longer in between sheds and a little bit longer to shed, but as they, get to full length, they might shed a little less frequently. Are they poisonous or can you talk about venomous versus dead? Yeah, so the question is, are they poisonous? So that's a good common misconception between some terms. Poisonous and venomous mean two different things. Poisonous means that uh, it's, if you consume it, you consume it and you become poisoned. Venomous would be an, um, if you're injected with a venom. And so snakes, may be venomous or non-venomous. And in this case, uh, all three of these snakes are non-venomous. They are considered constrictors. So they're gonna grab their prey and they're gonna squeeze it really tight and then swallow it whole. And uh, so you'll see a lot of constrictors are typically longer, um, thicker bodied snakes are really, really strong. Venomous snakes don't have to be that big because they um, inject venom into their prey and kill it that way. And they need to be faster. How do they get into trees? And how do they stay from falling? The question is, how do they climb into trees and keep from falling out? So as you're watching these snakes move, you can see that they have total control of literally every part of their body. So um, they use their whole body. It's, there's a lot of different types of snake movement, but what they'll do is they tend to, if it's just like a, a pole shaped thing, they'll kind of wrap their body around the pole and then start to move their front half up wrap around that and then move their back half up but it um the way they do that is just with a lot of really advanced muscle movements and their scales also help them kind of hang on and grip to it do we have any other questions how many snakes do we have the question is how many snakes do we have that's a great question so in our area at the Hamel Play Zoo, Wild Encounters in our ambassador program, we have kind of too many to count right off the top of my head, but we have a series of corn snakes, we have king snakes, we have a brown house snake, and you'll see all those guys at the Hamel Family Play Zoo at the Zoo at Home Exhibit. And then um, we also have Casper at, on exhibit at the Play Zoo upstairs. We have a Burmese python on exhibit upstairs. And then some behind the scenes animal, you'll see Marceline, the other ball python. We have sand boas, we have garter snakes. We have a lot of animals, or a lot of snakes, species. And you'll see them throughout the day in the summertime during our summer chats, reptile chats and ambassador chats alike. Who's the biggest animal here at Wild Encounters? The question is, who's the biggest animal? Or snake. Oh, sorry, snake at Wild Encounters or the play zoo would be Atticus or Burmese Python. And now he's not full grown, so those guys can get anywhere past like 15 feet long, but he's about 10 feet long now and he's still growing. He's a really impressive animal. How long will Casper get? The question is how long will Casper get? Casper will probably maybe about a half to another foot longer and a little bit thicker, but she's getting close to being full grown. And to repeat what kind of snakes these guys are, Casper the white one and Marceline, the, the smaller one, are ball pythons, Casper being leucistic and Marceline being a more normal patterned snake. And then Medusa on the left is a Dumeril's boa or 
often called a Madagascar ground boa. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, yeah. The question is uh, to go over leucistic again. So leucistic for Casper is what makes her all white. It's a, it's a mutation, but basically she doesn't have, she's not albino, because you'll notice she doesn't have red eyes, um, but she's all white. She has no pattern, no pigment. An albino snake would be a little different in that it still has a pattern. Um, you, if you were to look at Marceline over here too, it would have a similar pattern, but it would be different colors. It would be like yellow and white. Why is Medusa named Medusa? The question is, why is Medusa named Medusa? Because it is a cool name. Um, at one time we had a pair of these guys, and I think we just went on a theme. One was Medusa and one was Ursula. So they were just really cool names for a really cool snake. How big are they at birth? The question is how big are they at birth and how many babies do they have? So that will depend on the species of snake as well. And I believe for a doom rose boa, now they actually give birth to live young and they typically have maybe like eight to 12 babies. They're not very long. Um, I don't know right off the top of my head a number, but I mean, they're like, they look like noodles. Um, and whereas a ball python will actually lay eggs and they can have a clutch of like four to six eggs. And again, they're not very big either. They're pretty small. The question is, do they live together or do they prefer to be separate? So here at the zoo, we have these guys separated. Now, certain species of snakes can be housed together. Ball pythons typically can too, but some of the things we wanna, we'd wor we wanna make sure is that they were together from the beginning and they stay a relatively same size. All right. Well, I hope you guys had a good time. Thank you for joining us, for bringing the zoo to you. We will be doing this every weekday at 11 o'clock. So hopefully you guys come back and join us again. Have a good day.